Hello everyone and welcome to a practical introduction to reinforcement learning. Today we're going to build the Atari Crazy Climber using a reinforcement learning algorithm. And uh, the goal with this game is to get to the top of four buildings and uh, catch the helicopters while avoiding obstacles. And today we'll be using Python and stable baselines and the OpenAI Gym to train and be able to play this game using reinforcement learning. Now, before we begin, there are five key concepts that we need to understand. The first one is what an agent is. So in RL or reinforcement learning, an agent is the main character that we want to accomplish a task. So in this case, that's the climber that we can see right here. The environment is the world in which the agent interacts and exists within. So in this case, that's the buildings and all the obstacles and everything like that, the game environment. An observation is a static snapshot of the environment as seen by the agent. So for example, that could be where the obstacles are, where the player is. And the key thing to know here is that the observation that we are doing might not describe fully the entire state of the environment. Because, for example, if our climber only can watch what's above him, you don't get a complete state of everything that's going on. Now, in action, that's a single thing that we want to do, like the agent decides to do based on its observations and perhaps previous actions. And based on that action, the observation or the environment gives back a reward and also updates its state. And it's the reward that the agent can then use to take better and better actions. So in essence, we got the RL loop, where we got the agent, it performs an action in the environment, and the environment gives back uh, both an updated state, but also a reward. And when we're talking about actions and states and rewards and even observations, we're talking about observation and action spaces. So an action, you pick it from an action space. And the action space is all the possible actions that the agent can perform in the environment. And it could be either discrete or continuous. So discrete, that means it can only take on certain values. Well, it continues if that can be from negative infinity to infinity. Or it can maybe be 5 to 10, but any value in between. But in this case, we're talking about a discrete action space because we can only take nine different actions. We can either go up, upright, right, down, right, down, down, left, left, or up, left. And depending on our actions, we're going to see that the environment changes because the character will move or not move. And that's the no op in, or no operation in the middle there. And based on our actions, we'll get rewards. And on, based on those rewards, we can take better actions and hopefully being able to master this game. So without further ado, let's get coding. And for this, we're using Jupyter Notebooks. And I've created one of these kind of template codes right here that we will start filling in from scratch. Now, if you not have imported or installed the um, stable baselines, you can do so with these commands. And basically what stable baselines is, it's a library filled with pre-built reinforcement algorithms. And this is so we don't have to build every algorithm from scratch. We can only just describe the environment, describe the actions that we want to take, and then we can implement and actually learn in the environment using one of these algorithms right here. And stable baselines is based on the OpenAI gym. So if we go OpenAI Gymnasium, it's called. And we can see here that here we got all the environments that we need. But the first thing we need to do then is install all or the import of dependencies. So there we go. We got quite a bit of dependencies here. 
So A2C, that's the learning algorithm that we will be using today. We also got the VEC frame stack. So that means that we can learn by building several environments at once. So we can play several games at once and learn from that. Evaluate policy, that's how we can test our algorithm or test our model. And make Atari Env is just for us to make these Atari games. Okay. But if we go to the gymnasium documentation, we can see that we have, uh, for example, down here, we've got the Atari. And if we click on see more environments, we can see that we got the crazy climber game right here. And here's kind of the documentation behind this game. And if you scroll down, we can see the environment name. So the latest ones are the V5s here, and that's what we will be importing. So to import those, we're going to get a feel for the environment. So first of all, we specify the environment name. So we're going to call it Crazy Climber V5. And then we're just going to import that ENV. And the cool thing about this is that we can actually then take a look at the action space. And we can see that it's this discrete nine where we got the nine different actions. But we can also use the sample function to get a random action from that action space. So right here, we can just sample through all of our actions. Similarly, we can also take a look at the observation space. So observation space. And we can also sample from that to get a random observation. Now we can also put in this code right here to test and just make random actions in this environment and see it graphically. So let me run this and as we can see we can see that the agent is just taking random actions uh, going through right here and it's just doing the different um, five different games. So episodes that's when we say how many complete games do we want to go through. Then we go through every single episode. We set done to false. So every time we're not completed a game or lost a game or whatnot. Start with a score of zero. Then we will reset the environment. And the env dot do reset, it does double duty. It resets the environment and we get um, the initial observation. And here we got the R loop. So we're going to render the view. We're going to take an action. So we're going to take a random action. And then we're going to say, okay, what's the result from that action? So we're going to get the new observation, going to get the reward, check if we're done or not, and also get info from it. And then we'll update our score and print the episode like so. And then we close the environment so we don't have it up and running. Now, the cool things here is that um, we can take this and then actually train it. And that's what we're going to do down below. And to train the model, we use these lines of code right here. So first of all, we use the make Atari wrapper and put in the environment name that we specified up here. Then we say that we want to train on four games at once and also use a common seed. And then we just use the VEC frame stack, say that we want to stack it four times. And, and then we have kind of set up our environment. Next up, we also want to log our model so we can go back to the training and see how it did. So we specify the log path using os.path to join. And this is just so this line works on both Mac, Windows, and Linux machines. And here is actually when we are importing the model. So we're using the A2C. We will be using a CNN policy. And that means that we will be using a CNN neural network. And a CNN neural record, that's the convolutional neural networks that are more attuned to images and working with images. Then we've got the environment. We're saying that we want to see what happens and we want to save them to TensorBoard. And here's the cool stuff. Here's actually where you learn it. 
for a total time steps of 100,000 steps. And each time step equals one action. So we're basically going to let the agent take 100,000 actions, and hopefully it's going to get better points than these random actions down here. So I'm going to run this. Now we can see that it's using my CPU device, and we're also wrapping it and also logging it then to A2C5. Here we can see it's initializing. We got total time steps 2000, and here we can see start logging kind of information about when the model is learning. What we can see is that we got two scores that are very interesting, and that's the EP len main and the EP reward mean. So it mean, basically means the average episode length and the app average episode reward. And for this game, you want the length of the game to be as high as possible, probably, and also the reward. So hopefully we'll see these ones increase. So this is a table from Stable Baselines. These are all the algorithms that they have implemented. And as we can see, we're using A2C. And when you're picking the model, you kind of want to look at the action space. And because we're using a discrete action space, we want to look at those models with a check mark in the discrete column. And as we can see, A to C works with the discrete action space, and therefore we can use it. But as we can see, there's a lot of models that work with the discrete um, action space. So we could, for example, test DQN or PPO, Acer to try out and see what results we get. Now to save the model, we use these two commands. So you say the model path, and I'm going to call it A2C, create a climber 100k model. And then we just do model.save. When we want to load the model, we can just do the same model that we did before. And then use the A2C load to load in the model. And this is so we can train it once and then load it and use it over and over again. To test the environment then, we're going to use E on V and then make Atari N. And instead of using four, we're going to use one because we just want to train on one, but we still need to kind of do the frame stack so it still recognizes the environment that it was training. In. And then we use the valid policy and we can specify here doing 10 games and render up true to see how it did. And now you can see that the model has finished training. So to view the logs, we're just going to go into our log folder. You can can see my structure here that we have the training and inside training inside logs we got that one right here then we type tensorboard dash dash logger equals dot to open a tensorboard server and if i just reload this one right here we can see a to c5 we can see these two graphs right here at the episode length and also the reward and if I run this one right here, we can see it playing on this little screen right here. And we can also make it a bit bigger and view it. And that's it. So I'll close this one right here using n.close. And then we can see that it scored a 3,430 on average. And we go up. And see, so just random games. We can see that it's actually doing about three times as good than just playing randomly. I also trained a 500,000 time step model, and we can see that it's just getting better and better than the 100k model that we trained before. And that just says, uh, goes to say that if you're training for longer, often you can get better results. Okay, but that was everything for this video. I hope you learned something about reinforcement learning and have a project to show it off. If you want the code, you can find it in the description. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.